talk really fast because there's a lot to get through. So, uh, for my math project, I decided to study the Ebola outbreak and um, see how that uh, see how it can be translated mathematically. Okay, so here's just some background on the disease itself. It is a fatal illness, and right now it has a 70% fatality rate. And for my project, I focused on Ebola specifically in the countries of Sierra Leone and Liberia. And just one really important thing to know about Ebola is that it's considered an extremely infectious disease, so a minuscule amount of the virus can get you sick, but it's not extremely contagious. So unlike diseases such as measles or influenza, it can't be contracted through the air. It can only be contracted through bodily fluids. So I looked at the number of cases and the number of deaths in those two West African countries, and my goal was to figure out what mathematical principles could describe the spread of a disease or epidemic like Ebola, and how I could look at the future of the outbreak and see how it would progress through time. And I used Logger Pro to create a series of graphs that will represent this data. So the first thing I did was plot the number of people infected with Ebola per month in Liberia. And this starts at the beginning of the outbreak in March 20, uh, 2014, and it goes up until the present day. And the first thing I noticed was that this looked like exponential growth. So I thought that I could use a natural exponential function to model the growth of this disease. Okay, so this graph is showing the number of cases in Liberia, which is are these blue points, and the number of deaths, which are the red points. And what I did was I found a best, sort of best line, or best curve that fits this set of data. And it turned out to work as a natural exponential function. So that's what these are on the bottom. Y is the number of cases, Y2 is the number of deaths. And just with exponential functions, you have a series of variables that transform the graph physically alter the way it looks. So um, these coefficients out in the front are what are called the A value, and the A value will um, vertically stretch or compress the graph. So both of these functions are being stretched vertically by these factors, 186 and 343. And the exponent next to the X up here, these decimal values, are what are considered the B values, and these horizontally stretch or compress the graph. So both of these are being horizontally stretched by a factor of 0.4 or 0.3. And then finally, a D value um, is what shifts the graph, the graph up or down the Y axis. And um, these values have meaning also in regard to the disease itself. So the value of A and D will show you the initial number of people and number of cases um, of Ebola, and the value of B will show the infectious nature of the disease. Oh, sorry, can you go back? Um, also, um, it's interesting to look at the curves of these graphs and think about the slope at a given point, which is also the derivative, um, which will show you the rate of change. So in this instance, you have the number of Ebola cases over time or the number of deaths over time. And that will show you how fast the cases or deaths are increasing. And it's also important in predicting the future of this outbreak and how it will affect people um, in time. And you can see that the slope has been increasing more recently. So it started out you know, rising sort of gradually, and then it really has been uh, going up significantly and affecting more people in a shorter period of time. So this graph um, extends all the way to May 2016, and you can see that it like really shot up. The slope is increasing more and more over time. And if the disease did act this way, it's predicted that every single person in Liberia, which is over 4 million people, will have Ebola by um, March 2016. And then this graph is showing the number of cases and deaths in Sierra Leone. And these two exponential functions do have different values, but they're affected the same way by um, the variables. 
And once again, you see an increasing slope over time, more people dying or getting Ebola in a shorter period of time. And then this graph also um, extends into 2016. And again, there's a really huge increase in the slope or derivative. And it's predicted that everyone in Sierra Leone, which is over 6 million people, would be infected with Ebola by October 2016. Okay, and can you go forward? Yeah, and then forward again. Okay, so these two graphs are just showing sort of the future of the outbreak. This is Sierra Leone, that's Liberia. And you can see that um, in Liberia we have a more severe case in that uh, the slope is greater, more people are being affected faster. So like four million people, for example, in, in both of these graphs um, would have it earlier on in Liberia compared to Sierra Leone. 30 seconds. Three seconds. Okay. And just really quickly, uh, this basic exponential model is easy to understand and manipulate, but it will increase forever. And in reality, there's a limit to the population that can be affected. And over time, public health initiatives will work and the rate will eventually start to plateau and decrease, but it provides a really interesting way of studying an exponential function and see how that can apply to real world problems. Are there any questions? <laughs> this outbreak for a couple of months in the news, and maybe it's like some morbid side of me, but for some reason it's just like really interesting to me um, how it's such a fatal disease and how it's causing or wreaking so much havoc, and um, being able to apply math to that was a cool way to look at it in a different light. So like, assuming that the entire population of Sierra Leone is not going to die. What, like at what point, like time-wise, would we expect the numbers to go down? Well, I don't actually know that because right now it's still at a point where it's just increasing and increasing, but once sort of more medical attention is paid, is paid to those areas and we come up with better ways of keeping infected people in quarantine or um, protecting outsiders from getting the disease, I don't know. <laughs> but hopefully soon. Okay. Can I see the uh, the graphs of because uh, if I I can't see that one. Can you go back to the other one that you can? Uh, so that's your and then the Liberia. Seems like it'd be better to live in Syria and Leon, huh? I mean, it seemed like the number of deaths. Like it seemed seems like the your function that seemed to be about the same for the infection rates from one to the other, but deaths in Sierra Leone is not as steep. Is that true? Um, am I I'm not reading that correctly? I mean, in Sierra Leone, the, the situation is not as severe as it is in Liberia for, I mean, reasons that just have to do with medical attention, but also, I mean, with the function, it's the actual graph itself is being um, horizontally stretched more, so it's rising at like a slower pace than it is in Liberia. And I think that just has to do with the nature of the disease and how it's being treated in those countries. But you don't know what they're, if they are doing anything differently than I don't know. Liberia. Okay. So, what, like I was, okay, so like what, if you say if it would continue until like October or whatever, everyone would be affected. What actual like percentage of the population of these countries has been affected by it? Oh, um, I mean, I know that in total, something like 7,500 people have had Ebola in Sierra Leone or Liberia, and that's just out of like six or four million people. So it's not percentage-wise gonna seem that severe, but as an outbreak goes, like it's really infectious and it's spreading very quickly. I'm just thinking like, 
if, and I know you're dealing with just kind of mathematical what ifs, but like if it did get like so bad, wouldn't it actually change because of the number, the population would be actually decreasing? I mean, here the infection rate is increasing so much, and deaths are increasing so much that the population is actually going down. Uh, would it cause the fun the your function or your to to change? I don't know. I mean, I guess if the population is like this, would have to like right now. It's just it's a fraction of the population, but no, I'm not sure. To think about that. Um, did you learn anything about other diseases as you studied in comparison to Ebola that was interesting to you? Anything that? Um, I mean, I didn't um, research other diseases, but. Do they um, rate diseases? Like? Yes, they, they do. Um, um, in, in models that doctors or mathematicians or scientists use, there's a value for sort of like that involves the transmission rate and the infectiousness of it called R and like on a scale um, Ebola is on the lower side because it's like it's not that easy to get unless you're in contact with um, infected bodily fluids but something like measles has like an R value of 18 and Ebola is only at like 1.5 but it's much more deadly. So does do organizations like the CDC like use similar to what you did, like use this technique to find out their graphs? Um, I think this technique is one. Um, uh, um, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't think that they would just use like a simple exponential model because it's not that accurate. It's not taking into account. Um, I didn't talk about this, but like. This model's more realistic. It takes into account susceptible people versus infected people versus people who are immune or recovered. But like all of those factors do contribute to like how they model it and study the future of that.